most skincare products. There's very little HA can do for you, uh, do for your skin when you rub it on the surface, except perhaps softening the skin surface a little bit. Remember, it's trapping water, so you might get some water trapping on the surface, on the very surface. I can always tell if a product or a company knows what they're doing by looking at the ingredient deck. When I see it, that's basically because I've been doing chemistry for a long time, but you should be doing it too. You want to be an ingredient deck reader. So if you're going to go out and spend 150 bucks on your Kathy Ireland New Gene, uh, New Gene Eye Serum, look at the ingredient deck. If you see the first ingredient deck is human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media, that could be kind of overwhelming. Human adipose derived stem cell conditioned media. What it means is human adipose, that's fat, uh, human adipose derived stem cells, that's stem cells that come from, from a human being's fat. They take that stem cell, they stick it in a conditioned, in a media, in a Petri dish, and then they remove the cells and they put the media or the Petri dish stuff in your product. If you don't know how to read an ingredient deck, you're just going to go with Kathy Ireland or with Nugene. So you've got to be an ingredient, ingredient deck reader. When I see an ingredient, uh, a product called hyaluronic acid cream or hyaluronic acid lotion or hyaluronic acid serum, my BS alarm goes off as a chemist. Hyaluronic acid is very sticky and gooky and difficult to work with. That's for one thing. It's really sticky. So you only can use very, very tiny amounts of hyaluronic acid. That's why when, when most skincare companies use hyaluronic acid, they're using it as a 1% gel. So when you buy, if you're a skincare company and you buy hyaluronic acid from a supplier so you can put it in your cream or lotion, you're buying it as a 1% gel. It costs about 60 or 70 bucks a kilo at 1%, at a 1% concentration. And then the company that's making your, the lotion or the cream is going to take that 1% gel that they paid 60 bucks a kilo for, 70 bucks a kilo for, it's a, a, a thousand grams, and then they're going to put it in their product. And then they're going to say, well, we put 20% hyaluronic acid in our product, or 10%, or 5%, or 1%, when they're not telling you it's 20% of a 1% gel. That's 0.2% HA, or even less. That's kind of sneaky, you guys. Now, 0.2% hyaluronic acid is like a speck of hyaluronic acid in, in an ounce. And while you may get a little bit of residual feel, you aren't going to do much for your skin. But because hyaluronic acid, when you take it orally, can be so therapeutic and so beneficial and so important, there's this tendency to assume that we'll get similar benefits when we rub that little speck on the surface of our skin. Well, guess what? It's not true. And if you're using these kind of topical products, you're more than likely wasting your money. So the bottom line here is hyaluronic acid is important stuff, but you're not going to get much benefits by applying it topically, especially in the misleading concentrations and forms that are available over the counter. Now, doctors, plastic surgeons, and dermatologists have figured out how to bypass this problem of hyaluronic acid's impermeability through the surface, through the stratum corneum surface, and they're going to, they can actually inject hyaluronic acid to get past the stratum corneum barrier, and there's several products that uh, will take advantage of hyaluronic acid swelling effects to help with fine lines and wrinkles. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. We'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Right, we're back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a couple more things I want to say here about hyaluronic acid. I'm going to talk a lot about it tomorrow. We'll talk about why you want the stuff and how you can get the stuff and the, the right way to get the stuff. Uh, you're not going to get any benefit except for maybe a little bit of softening the surface of the skin. You're not going to get much benefit by rubbing a hyaluronic acid cream uh, on top of your skin. Even if you put straight hyaluronic acid on your skin, nothing would really happen. You might get a little bit of softening of the surface. Doctors have figured out how to bypass this problem, the skin surface barriers resistance to hyaluronic acid by uh, injecting the stuff. And you can inject hyaluronic acid into the lower levels of the skin, into the, uh, into the uh, dermis of the skin, the, the deeper layers of the skin. Once it's implanted in the skin's lower levels, it can have a plumping effect, a filling effect, and there's products called Restylane, 
R-E-S-T-A-L-Y-N, and Juvederm. And these are marketed as filler products that can kind of plump up fine lines and wrinkles. They're not going to do anything for the cells of the skin. Remember, all disease is cell disease. All health is cell health. And you're not going to affect the cells with an injectable hyaluronic acid. But you will plump up the skin a little bit, and we'll have some, uh, some visible, temporary effects, visible but temporary effects. Of course, if you're injecting a foreign substance into your skin, hyaluronic acid, or any foreign substance into the skin, which is a fully-fledged organ of the body, you can always get side effects and you can always get adverse reactions. In the case of hyaluronic acid, granulomas, which are lumps or, or bumps, can form. And they can be pretty hideous, these granulomas, and they're very difficult to treat. These kinds of reactions are especially likely to occur in a body or in the skin of a body that is not healthy. If you have digestive problems, if you have immune problems, if you have a history of allergies, you want to be really careful about in injecting anything, really, into your skin, including Juvederm or uh, Restylane. You will get some plumping effects, and, and, uh, and you, can get some, some, you can improve the appearance of the skin by injecting the stuff, but you're not going to change the health of the tissue. And it's really all about health. I'm a healthcare professional. Skincare professionals should be healthcare professionals, the way I look at it. The best way to get, your, uh, to, uh, to get the, the benefits of hyaluronic acid is to make your own. Your skin is making its own hyaluronic acid. Your joints are making its own hyaluronic acid. Your eyeballs are making their own hyaluronic acid. So can't we figure out how to make our own hyaluronic acid to upregulate hyaluronic acid? Well, indeed, we can. And we will be talking about that tomorrow as we continue talking skin health. Specifically, hyaluronic acid on the bright side. All right, time to hit our phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Melissa in Oregon. What's cooking? Welcome to the bright side, Melissa. Hi, Ben. Hey, I just what's want up? to tell you that I love the Longevity product. Awesome. And I really love your show. It brightens my day. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. How can we help you? I'm calling about my dad. Um, he's 63 years old, and he has a so-called genetic disease called um, Huntington's Korea. Okay. But what I wanted to pick your brain about today was he also has hepatitis C and he's very fatigued from it. Okay. So he's been wanting to get on this treatment called Harvoni. Oh yeah. thousand dollars a pill. I heard it was really expensive and I, I just wanted to talk to you before he even started okay. down that road. How bad is this Huntington's Korea? Huntington's Korea, by the way, is a, is a brain a brain issue. It causes movement disorders. Korea means dancing, and it causes these kinds of abnormal kind of dancing-like movements. Woody Guthrie died of Huntington's Korea. It's, it's a really serious problem. How long has he had it? Um, he got diagnosed about seven years ago. But, how bad um, is it? He was it's, it's kind of bad. Um, I, I mean, he, he broke his leg recently, so he's recovering from that now, too. Wow, this poor guy. But, yeah, um, it's, how, I don't how know. Old really your, how old he's is he? He's 63. Okay, so he's a young man. He's got lots of good living to do here. Here's what yeah. you need to do. All right? And it's not a coincidence that the hunt, he's got hep C and Huntington's chorea. Basically, when you have Huntington's disease or when you have hep C, you got a body that's kind of falling apart. I was talking to a gal yesterday on the phone, and she was telling me all her health problems. I said, you know, you only have one health problem, ma'am. It's called MBFA disease. I'm telling you that uh, for you, Melissa, for your dad too. He's got only one problem. They can, in the brain, it's Huntington's. In the liver, it's Hep C. He's probably got other issues. I'm sure he's got some digestive problems and other things going on too. By the way, the liver is a digestive organ, so. By definition, if you have hep C, you have a digestive problem. But in any case, he only has one health problem. It's called MBFA disease. You know what that stands for? No. I made it up, by the way. It's called <laughs> my body is falling apart disease. It's, that's the only disease he has, MBFA disease. I named a new disease, my body is falling apart disease. And it covers everything. It covers all chronic degenerative disease. And the only people who care about all these special types of diseases are the specialists. They're the only people who care because that's how they make their living. So we think that we got to treat the brain and the nerves and the bone and the liver. We just got to treat the body because his body is falling apart. So how do you treat the body? First things first, always, 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 always the digestive system. I will guarantee you with 100% certitude, your dad has had a digestive condition his whole life. For Huntington's disease to show up and hep C to show up, he has to have had long-term chronic digestive problems for these kinds of issues to show up at the age of 63, which is relatively young, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. 
So, am I? Do you do you know, or is this sound familiar? Um, Long term I'm not really sure, but okay. So we want to work on the digestive system first. Now he could do a food diary. Probably should do a food diary, and that's where you write down all the foods you eat, and then write down how you feel after you eat those foods every hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. You keep track of it Mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks, and then you eliminate problem foods. That's always the first thing to do. But maybe because he's already broken down so severely, it may be that he wants to just take emergency measures and just do a quick fast. A three-day fast, a Swear-O-V cleanse. You get on the Swear-O-V product, and you do half a bottle of Swear-O-V, which is an amazing, amazing product, by the way. Thank you, Jordan Rubin, for putting that together. Uh, the Swear-O-V is a fermented whey product. It gives you energy. It's got um, uh, potassium and sodium and electrolytes, so it'll give you energy through your fast. Plus, it'll give you the probiotics to stable the gut bacteria. Half a bottle every hour. Uh, in a 12-hour day, you're going to do six bottles, obviously. And uh, then after three days of the cleanse, start eating again. And what he'll notice is foods that he would ordinarily be able to eat and not notice a problem with, he'll start to notice problems. In other words, he will have hit the reset button during those three days that he cleansed. Right. And he'll also feel better. His Huntington symptoms will subside while he is fasting. And that's very important because that'll give him some relief. He maybe has not had any relief from the Huntington's for, for years, maybe decades. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long he's had it. So just the fasting alone will have a positive effect on the Huntington's. But then when he starts eating again, he's going to notice things. And that will, make the, uh, that will make the food diary and the food elimination a little bit easier for him. He'll, he'll know what, what's causing problems. Then he wants to get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence, 3 in the morning, 3 at night. It probably wouldn't hurt him to use the ultimate enzymes after meals and also ultimate enzymes between meals. Uh, enzymes between meals can have a wonderful blood thinning effect, wonderful anti-inflammatory effects. So between meals, maybe uh, two, two or three enzymes uh, on an empty stomach, and then with his meals, two or three enzymes, and do a little apple cider vinegar with his meals. Throw in the Fucoid Z, which can also help the digestive system and also has anti-inflammatory effects. And of course, you want him on the Healthy Star Pack, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. The hep C issue, as I said earlier, is a digestive issue probably. The liver is a digestive organ. After you eat, when you eat food, food goes into your intestine, it crosses over the intestine, goes into the blood, and from there it goes right into the liver. So the liver is part of this whole digestive process, and he'll notice that once he starts to eliminate problem foods, he'll notice that his liver symptomology will start to improve as well. Now, the, the $1,000 a pill medicine supposedly you know, kills the virus, but he's got bigger fish to fry, and there's no... There's no way to prevent the virus from coming back, and he can't take a thousand-dollar pill, a uh, thousand-dollar pill medicine for the rest of his life. So, working on the digestive system is first and foremost what he wants to do. Hang tight, because I got a couple more things for you. Don't go away, Melissa. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six six. All right, we are back on the Bright Side, talking to Melissa in Oregon about her dad. Melissa, you there? Yep. Okay. So uh, first things first, uh, if we take care of the digestive system, we're going to take care of inflammation in the body, and that'll take care of, uh, that'll help with the liver, and it'll also help with the Huntington's chorea, depending on how broken down your, your dad is, and chances are, if he's only 63 and he's got these kinds of symptoms, that he's been doing something, the wrong thing for a long time. Is he a smoker, by the way? He is, and he also okay. eats a ton of sugar. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you can only do what you could do. You can only do what you can do. So get them on the healthy star pack. You probably have to throw in the sweeties after all your, after all his meals. Do the uh, Biolumin Nightly Essence. If you can get him to do a swear of the cleanse, he's going to notice immediate results just from the fasting. And certainly food elimination will make a big difference as well. Biolumin Nightly Essence and digestive enzymes, these, those are the things we, we talked about before the break. But there's a couple other things that you could do for him as well for the liver. And I would be doing this. Uh, this is what I'd be doing if it was me. Um, you want him on a, uh, something called NAC, NAC, unbelievably important for the liver. NAC is actually emergency room medicine for liver poisoning. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper than Harvoni. Maybe a gram a day, 500 milligrams twice a day on NAC. Uh, have him using a little bit of glutamine powder, and he'll get glutamine in whey protein in the Slender FX if he wants to use the Longevity products, but I'd be throwing in a little glutamine powder, maybe a teaspoonful a day. Vitamin C is stupendously, critically important for the liver and the, and the uh, brain as well, the nervous system as well. Uh, you'll get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but he may want to throw in maybe an, an extra quarter teaspoonful a day uh, in water and sip on some vitamin C water with his Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Uh, throw in the Ultimate Selenium, maybe 400 micrograms a day, anywhere from 200 to 400 micrograms a day of the ultimate selenium. And then uh, I'd be using something called alpha 
lipoic acid, which is also very, very helpful for the liver, maybe 1,000 milligrams a day. There's other things you could do as well. Vitamin E has wonderful effect, uh, benefits for the liver, 400 IU a day. Uh, you may want to get something called M. MCT oil or use coconut oil. Coconut oil is a source of MCT oil. Yesterday we talked about how important coconut oil is. Coconut oil is 